the T-72 the most lethal tank on Earth, that is for its crew, T-72 and 90% of Ruski's equipment are piece of shit, <coughs> T-72 is nothing but a piece of <coughs> shit for every tank crew. Worst tank in the world, excuses, excuses, excuses. I don't give a <coughs> shit which T-72 you have. When matched against the M1 Abrams the T-72 gets smoked. Yes, yeah, yeah, T-72 was a great track. track. Very Is T-72 a good tank? Since 1991 Gulf War, most people would reply, of course it's not. But is it really the case? T-72 as a tank changed a lot since then, and the most modern variant is the T-72 B3, model 2016, which is the tank we are going to talk about today, and to see how would it actually perform in modern battlefield. So how good is the protection of the tank? First of all, the base armor of the tank is the same as on T-72 BM from 1989, which has the turret from T-72B from 1984, which was tested against captured M111 HATS APFSDS projectiles, and the protection was rated at 530mm. During the tests, the upper front plate was also rated at 530mm, but it got changed on T-72BM model, and it is better protected. On top of the base armor, it has Contact 5 explosive reactive armor plates. But according to official modernization memorandum, the old 4S22 explosive filler on the upper front plate got replaced by 4S23, which was designed for relic explosive reactive armor, but it can also fit inside of Contact 5 plate. The difference between 4S22 and 4S23 is that 4S23 is more sensitive to APFSDS projectiles and tandem shade projectiles. But it still works in the same fashion as older Contact 5, so the level of protection should stay the same, but it would be more sensitive to more modern projectiles that were meant to beat Contact 5. The sides of the turret are equipped with 4S24 EREA blocks, which offer excellent protection against tandem shade projectiles. The side of the hull is equipped with modular side skirts, but it is unknown if they actually have EREA or just a non-explosive reactive armor type composed of steel and rubber. The sides and rear of the engine compartment, as well as rear of the turret, are equipped with cage or slat armor, which should offer good protection against high explosive anti-tech projectiles. The sides of the hull can also be fit with additional 4S24 EREA blocks. So, the front armor of the tank obviously lacks most modern EREA such as Relict, which would mean that its frontal arc is insufficiently protected against most modern threats, including APFSDS such as MA2983. But the sides, especially with 4S24, have excellent protection against heat threats, including most modern ATGMs. So, in conclusion, against APFSDS, the T-72B3's protection wouldn't be satisfactory. But against heat threats, which are most common, it would be somewhat satisfactory, because there is possibility that Contact 5 on the turret still uses 4S22 explosive filler, since there was no information about its upgrade. The firepower and fire control system of the tank, on the other hand, are very good. The tank uses 4A46 M5 125mm smoothbore gun, which is one of the newest guns developed in Russia, and it can use most modern APFSDS, such as Swinets 1, which has 370mm penetration at 60 degrees on 2 km, which would suggest around 700mm on flat surface, which is, according to available information, enough to penetrate hull armor of most NATO tanks. The high explosive anti tank projectile it uses is 3BK31 with triple charge and 800mm penetration. The ATGM being used is 9M119M1 Inver M with 800 to 900mm penetration and range of up to 5km. And it also received new high explosive fragmentation 3 Vof 128 Telnik 1 projectile which is a multi-purpose projectile that can airburst and detonate after penetration on top of regular high explosive and fragmentation abilities. The NSF HMG got replaced with Cord HMG. 
It should also be noted that this machine gun cannot be operated from inside the tank. Commander has to operate it manually, exposing himself. The fire control system incorporates Sosna U gunner sight, which is on par with modern main gun sights of other nation tanks. With automatic target tracking ability and day and night channel with second generation Catherine FC thermal imaging system. The commander lacks his own thermal imaging site, but he has a monitor where he can access gunner's thermal site and can take control of the turret and main gun. Although lacking CITV, commander has his own day and night channel, which includes passive infrared, and he can use his controls to turn the turret to set the gun on the target which he has spotted with his own sight. In conclusion, the tank's fire control system and firepower are on par with modern tanks. So in that field, the tank is nowhere near obsolete. The tank weighs around 46 tons and is powered with V92 S2F engine with 1130 horsepower and 2000 RPM with maximum torque of 4521 Nm and gives the tank the maximum speed of 75 km per hour on road and 60 km per hour cross country. The tank is also fitted with a new APP172 automatic transmission, which removes the old manual style gear shifting and makes the driving of the tank much easier. The driver also received digital display panel and rear camera. All of this gives the tank excellent mobility, which is better than what most of modern tanks can achieve. On top of all of this, the tank has R16825U2 radio, which allows communication with all units on the present battlefield. It also received system, which warns the crew which part of the tank requires repairs if damaged. So, the final conclusion is that the firepower and mobility of the tank are on par with other modern tanks. While the side protection is good enough, especially with 4S24 atom blocks on the side of the hull, which are also present at the turret, the frontal protection of the turret is lagging behind other modern tanks, and without the modern turret, such as the one of T-90A, it cannot offer any significant protection. The upper front plate, unlike the turret, has been upgraded in 1989, and with new 4S23 fillers, it offers more appropriate protection. But the thing is that this tank arrived too late. It is somewhat on par with modern tanks, but there are so many upcoming tanks that this tank has no real future without significant upgrades which would require upgrading the protection with the welded turret of T90A and relic explosive reactive armor on the frontal area of the tank. And addition of commander's independent thermal viewer. But Red, wouldn't all of that make it into a T90M? Yes, it would. But for now, it is good enough. Although there have been instances where they did indeed put relic explosive reactive armor, such as the T-72 B2 Rogatka from 2006, which on top of relic had laser warning receivers, which is also something T-72 B3 lacks. Also, they did upgrade a couple of T-72 B3 tanks with Commander's Independent Thermal Viewer, which we could have seen on Tank Biathlon, and the tank was known as T-72 B3M. But those upgrades were never accepted as a full modernization plan for the T 72 B tanks. Now, if they took Rogatka and upgraded it with components from T 72 B3 2016 and so called T 72 B3M, such as the new V92 S2F engine, automatic transmission, driver's display, and rear camera, new radio, and commander's independent thermal viewer, then they would have made the perfect T 72 for modern and future warfare. Oh! Oh my god! No! Oh, get the camera! Money! Money! Oh my god! Well, that is it. Thanks for watching. If you think I made a mistake somewhere, please let me know in the comment section down below. Check out my Patreon if you want to support my channel, or join my Discord server if you have some questions or just want to chat. And I will see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.